Hello and welcome to the New Hampshire Filmmaker Interview Series. I'm Bill Humphreys, Executive Director of PPM-TV. Our guest today is Sean Collins. He's a photographer, a videographer, and his work has ranged from action photography to documentary filmmaking. His passion for capturing images, first sparked by a high school photography class, has led the New Hampshire-based artist in many directions. And he's done studio work, corporate filming, music videos, film editing, and much, much more. So, Sean, welcome. I appreciate Thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here today. Um, let's just start out, if you would, please, a little bit um, about your own personal background and how you started getting into the film world. And, and um, so, I think uh, starting out, I started in high school, getting into film photography, thirty-five millimeter film, mm -hmm. uh, developing my own um, images, and really learning the process of exposure and how to shoot an image and frame it. Um, I learned that a lot through my high school teacher and really got into it and he pushed me to keep up with it and um, I continued to do it through college on my own. I took a couple classes that helped with digital imaging and processing. Um, but I really just kept doing it on my own. I did concerts at the college that I went to, University of Maine, mm -hmm. um, and kept going with that and started to do some film on my own as well. Learning from watching other films, learning from just being out in the field and shooting my own films, um, whether they be snowboard films or just fun things with friends and just learning along the way the process of what works and what doesn't. How do you, uh, how do you assess the difference in moving from still photography to motion photography? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of a difference. Um, I think they're, similar in the way that you can frame something but then you have to learn that where is your subject going to move or how am I going to cut this together so that it makes sense with the motion and with the audio and you have all these different aspects that you have to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. It's not just your image and you're framing it, you're also paying attention to the audio and the color space and how exposure changes depending on where you are and so there's a lot of moving pieces. When you work uh, in action photography, and when we talk about action photography, you're talking about action, basically action sports, extreme sports, or, or skateboarding, or uh, snowboarding, or something like that. Do you worry at all when you're working in that particular genre, do you worry at all about storyline and, and what the story is that you're telling, or is it, um, how, do you, how do you draw the audience into a, uh, a consistent line of thought? Um, I think with a lot of that, it's about showing the, what goes into the sport itself and showing like what the athlete does to either get ready for a competition or showing the space that they're performing in and how amazing the, the height they're getting with a, a trick that they're doing or, and just keeping it framed the same way that you would frame anything else, but giving the viewer something more to look at than just a sport happening, maybe more of a beautiful image to look at with the sport happening within it. So the aesthetic of the art, the aesthetic of the, of the sports. Uh, yeah, so keeping the aesthetic the same as, as if it were a commercial shot or a documentary, mm -hmm. just having the viewer be able to see it in the same sense that they're looking at a landscape, mm -hmm. but there's somebody in it doing a trick or an, an action, whatever that is. And now you've moved into a, a, a documentary, which is your first entry into the New Hampshire Film Festival. And it's, uh, it's called, called um, Inside the Hideout by BCAP, who is a musician. He's a local musician here in, in New Hampshire. Um, he uh, mixes a few different genres, a little bit of acoustic uh, blues, soul, and then some hip hop, reggae. Um, fused together and I met him out at um, a show that he was playing in Portsmouth and I really liked his work and I wanted to work with him on a music video or some project we could get going and we decided that we were going to get in the studio together and film the process of his first album and also my first documentary. So it's a behind the scenes look at the work of BCAP in the studio and as he pre proceeds to create his first album. Yeah, so you really get to see how an artist puts something together and it's not the fabricated end result music video. Um, it's really looking at how somebody 
creates their music and how they put everything together from vocals to drums to acoustic guitar, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So it's really the piecing together of the music and you get to see that through the film. So it has much more of a storyline, personal storyline to it involved in his particular rise into the, the world of music? Yeah, you get to learn a little bit about him. Uh, I did a few interviews in the piece, so mm -hmm. you get to learn about his process and mm -hmm. what he's thinking about the album and where he wants to go with his music and what he sees for his future. Mm -hmm. um, so it's good. It's, it's good to see where he wants to take it. And it's maybe not necessarily the place that every other musician is thinking. Like, it, it's not the fabricated, making tons of money. It's about doing the art itself and, and about performing and about bringing music to people and, mm -hmm. and sharing his talent. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the process that you go through in creating what you have created for the film festival, having started with sports imagery, which is you've already said is more about the athlete and the, the uh, action involved in the, in the sport. Translating that knowledge of capturing that into capturing a music artist, which if we could identify maybe his artistry as a sport, mm -hmm. uh, if you, I'm, I, I think I may be putting words in your mouth and I don't mean to do that. But it would seem to me that that's where your where your mind might head. Mm -hmm. Am I on track there? Or yeah, so I think it's about capturing people's passions, and that's that's sort of the route that I've taken. Um, I think that people have all these different things that they do, talents, and mm -hmm. whether it's action sports or music or play theater or whatever it is, people have these talents that are able to be captured through documentary or film or, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I think by using the action sports knowledge that I had and the moving image and everything, I'm able to translate that into music being the, the action or music being the subject. And um, I think the action sports allows me to move quickly too. So I'm able to move around if I need to change a shot or something. So even though it's a documentary and it's a little bit slower paced than an action sport film, I'm still able to move if I need to change something really fast because I'm used to that fast paced. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your own creative process in putting the piece together and how did, uh, not so much how you became related with, with BCAP, but when you, how did you conceive the idea of doing this and how did you conceive your approach to the work that you did with him in the film? I think I wanted to capture the way that a musician puts something together because everybody thinks you go in the studio, you click record, you play it, and there it is, and it sounds amazing. It's not like that at all. It takes one, two, three, ten takes. Um, so I wanted to show this process and how it was being recorded and how, like, to show people what it looks like to actually record music and people that think, oh, this song's amazing, like I wonder how, how they did this and maybe they did it, it sounds like some of these songs were made overnight, which maybe some of them were, but a lot of the music done today it takes months and years to actually put together in a really cohesive piece. So mm -hmm. I think that I wanted to show how he thought about his music, but also how he performed the music and recorded it to make this solid album that he came out with. So when, you, uh, when you're thinking about that in, in your process of, of creating the piece, are you, are you visualizing it all in your own mind before you shoot how this is gonna be constructed and how it's gonna be put together or is it spontaneous on the, on the fly? Um, a lot of it is spontaneous just because I, don't, I didn't know him that well and I didn't know how his process was. Mm -hmm. But going into it, my my idea was that I would show the real aspect of it. So I'd show him stopping to talk about what he needs to do next and, oh, maybe we shouldn't record this or maybe we should change this song. I, I know that the songs that he was going to record at first were not the songs that ended up on the album. So he had an idea of what he wanted to do. We recorded a few songs that didn't even show up in the album. Um, so there were... I think he learned a little bit too. It was his first album, so he learned like what is going to work and what's not. 
So a lot of it was changing up the idea of what we were going to do, but I really wanted to show him and what he was thinking and what the different changes were going to happen within the studio. Because he went in there with an idea and he came out with a little bit of a different product than he wanted, but he mm -hmm. still is happy with the product that he came out with. Mm -hmm. Now this is a guy that you met? I met yeah, I met him at a show. Just down met, in Portsmouth. Just met him at a show, so you didn't really have a relationship with him. You didn't know who he was or, or much about him going into it, but realized that this was somebody that you wanted to work with. Yeah, he was. I mean, he's very talented, and I liked his music a lot. So I figured it could be a good project for us to work together. So now you're now you're placing yourself in front of somebody mm -hmm. who you don't know how they're going to receive you mm -hmm. or or you them in that regard right and all of a sudden you start working together on a project that really involves an intimacy of getting to know this person quickly mm -hmm. and being able to display that on camera how was that process because it's, it's not it's much different than just you know meeting somebody and developing a relationship with them over a period of time yeah. as you move forward yeah, it was, it was good. It was definitely fast paced. Um, we started to talk about the project and we pretty much formulated it together within a few months of when he was going to go in the studio. Um, so I had a little bit of time to get to know him, but we just went in the studio and I just was there like, almost like a fly on the wall um, during the process of this recording. And I lived in the studio with him. Um, so we were there till four in the morning, some, some mornings, and just getting what we needed to get done, even if we were all tired. And so that's gotta, that's gotta instill a tremendous amount of, um, of instantaneous trust. You to him, he to you. Yeah. Did that, was, were there any uncomfortable moments in the creation of that? Or no, I think we did a pretty good job. I mean, I know that there were some points that he didn't think like, oh, I, I was still filming. and. I <laughs> I mean, I, I kept the cameras rolling a lot through a lot of it because I wanted to get those emotions where he didn't get the take that he needed or yeah. he was upset with how things were going. I wanted to show the realism of recording music. Nice. So we have a clip from your film Inside the Hideout. We would uh, like you to take a look at that and uh, enjoy it. We'll be right back after viewing that and we'll continue our conversation with Sean Collins. Tell me what are we gonna do? The music world is a, it's a strange place, so I, I, I see myself finding, you know, just comfort in, in my field, uh, which I, I find more and more, you know, as each year goes by. I called them up and said, dude, I, I really want to work with you. What can we, <laughs> what can we get going here? Yeah, they want one for the television, one for the screen, one for the actors, and one for movie scenes. For all of us living this crazy dream, a life of entertainment day by day, don't take it You lightly. can see the enjoyment that people get out of art in its most basic form. For the good guy fighting to write the enemy, to make a quicker friend of me, the lessons in the end are free. Music for me is, has offered me a lot of opportunity, and I just, I, I hope that continues. You know, I'd like to, to see more of the world because of music and with my music and to bring my music to more places. For the magazine, for the dollar dash, for the end of greed, one for the love, and two for the treble, and three for the people that are on my level, what they want from me. Nice clip, thank you for letting us see the, uh, the inside of Inside the Hideout. Um, from a technical aspect, what, uh, give us a little bit of background on the, the cameras you were using and the uh, sound equipment, how did all that come together and, and what, were, what were you looking for when you, in your choices? So when I chose to do this film, I wanted to use the, the gear that I had because there was no budget. I approached him about the project, so it was a, a free, project. Um, I took two Canon DSLRs mm -hmm. um, and used those to make the film. Uh, one was a 5D2 and one was a 5D3. Um, so similar camera profile, mm -hmm. but the DSLR film route, because I shoot a lot of photography still, so, sure. so that's 
where I, I have my equipment is sort of universal right now. Um, and I also used a boom mic to get some sound in the room. Um, I had that over him for most of the recording so that I could get him talking as well about the takes that he was doing because I knew there were going to be moments where he stopped and said, hey, can we do that again? Um, I also recorded a little bit of the sound within the sound room itself to get the people talking about it, the producer and um, the technician, to just get them talking about the project. And the actual music tracks came from the record session? Correct, yeah. So the actual tracks came right off the board and actually the, the album itself. In post-production, did you have any difficulty as far as uh, synchronization or, or pulling that together and matching levels and sound and qualities? Yeah, that was definitely the hardest part. Yeah. So post was almost the part that took me the longest um, because I made this video look like it was one take throughout. And then there are some places in the, in the film where he stops. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was actually, and since I only had two cameras, you'll see a few different camera views in the actual film itself. I shot one song maybe eight, 10, 12 times. Um, and then I had to sync up each part and it took a, a long time. Yeah. What was your uh, production schedule from beginning to end? How long was it? Um, we started, I think about March um, last year and, or this year, and I finished in about May. Um, off, so off and on I was working on it. We filmed the whole thing in a weekend um, at the studio in Franconia, New Hampshire. And then the post-production, like I said, took me the longest. And I didn't sit down and do it all in one sitting. I did a few pieces here and there, I did the interview parts. And then for the end result, we mastered the sound. I sent it back to him actually so he could master it um, by himself. By himself. Yeah. That's great. So that became the, the, the whole production process, getting back to the relationship, became a, a collaborative effort between yeah. the two of you? Yeah. So we actually, he mixed the sound back together and I gave him the rough files of where everything laid out in the video mm -hmm. and levels of how I needed things to be, the backtrack mm -hmm. and then the interviews. Mm -hmm. And then he took it and mixed it back and sent it back and finalized the piece. It's a long process. It is a long process. Yeah, it's very long. What do you think, um, what do you think was the biggest thing you learned out of this particular process? I think the biggest thing learned would be that having more of an idea of what needed to be completed may have helped. It was a very spontaneous film because we didn't know each other. So I think going forward, if I get to know somebody a little bit better, it may work out better, but maybe it won't. I think by not knowing the person, I also got a few things out of it that maybe I wouldn't have. Um, but I think maybe learning more about the subject before going into it would help. Pre-production planning? Yeah. We did a little bit of that, and I knew about his music, and I knew what he was going to be recording, and I knew the, the area that we were going, but I never even saw the location before we got there. Mm -hmm. So I saw the location when he saw the location. He had never recorded I'd in never that studio. I'd never been in that studio before either. Yeah. No, it was a friend of a friend up in Franconia, New Hampshire, uh -huh. um, Mojo Studios, and we had, none of us had ever been there, uh -huh. just the producer. and. Uh, so it was a good learning experience. I had to learn about the space, and it was, it was a fairly wide open space, but there were some obstacles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, for lighting, I just I bounced some fluorescence off of white foam boards and used a lot of the light that was there, but none of it was natural because there was only, I think, one window within the actual studio, uh -huh. so it was all making the lights work around him. Yeah, yeah. It's a creative process of its own accord, trying to make that go on the, on the run. Yeah. Yeah. Did, um, has he ever done anything in front of camera before? Had he done any music videos before him? Um, he had done some live performances. Mm -hmm. He never had any like, finalized music videos before mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So I think this was his first big film project. And yeah. It was, it was interesting to see like when he watched it, there were some parts where he was like, ah, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I think this is a good part because it shows really who you are and it shows like you trying to put this track together and maybe this part didn't work out. And so 
there were a few things that we had to go over, but I think in the end he was really happy with it, and so was I. Did he um, fall in love with the film process in the course of it? Yeah, I think he enjoyed it a lot, and there, I mean, he had questions. He helped out, too, some of the filming. Um, there is a shot in the film, actually, at the very end where he's filming, so. So you'll have to see that so in the very end of the film. Got to um, get your hands dirty in, yeah. the, <laughs> in the process. Yeah, so it was good. And he's, I mean, he was helpful throughout. And he would not go with his take. He would wait until I was ready to record and to sync sound. I had him clap for, as a slate. Yeah. So he would do that a lot randomly. <laughs> <laughs> but so you're transforming like, somebody from, from one world into another, yeah. just as, almost as you had done for yourself, getting yeah. out of photography and into, uh, into motion. Yeah. What, uh, do you have any other projects planned to do with him? Or? Um, I think we're going to try and do some sort of music video coming up, maybe less documentary style. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think we're going to focus on something like that. I know that we, we keep in touch a lot. Um, we actually live down the street from each other now, so uh. go to the coffee shop and talk about different projects and ideas, and yeah. I keep up with his music, he keeps up with what I'm doing, so yeah. we're, we're definitely stay in touch. That's great, that's great. What about you and, and your, uh, your upcoming work? Do you have anything in, in line, in mind? Uh, so I do a lot of corporate work right now. I work for Converse Sneakers. Mm -hmm. um, I worked for Kohlhan Shoes in the past and Reebok and Spartan Race. So I did a lot of filming and editing for them. I mainly work for Converse right now. Um, I just edited their commercial that's on their website mm -hmm. currently. Um, I also just started a clothing line, which is all my photography. And it's all my photos on shirts front and back. So I'm making a walking art gallery. Oh, the, that's nice. Yeah, the name of the company is State 51. Excellent, excellent. And uh, do you have anything coming up that, that would take you out of this particular genre and into something else? I'm referencing perhaps narrative film or? Um, I think I'll stay within documentary and commercial work for now. I would like to at some point do a short or a feature. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's in the process of mm -hmm. thinking about what, what would that be, I guess. And I really have to find more time to do it too. Yeah. As much as I'd like to do it, I don't necessarily yeah. have the time yeah. at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just a couple of the last quick questions here. I, I'm curious to find out from your perspective because you are you graduated high school in 2010. 2006. Oh, I'm sorry. What? College. Oh, college was 2010. Yeah. Sorry. 20. Okay, so you've been out of college for four years. Correct. So, um, from your perspective, as a new entrant into the world of film from the directing standpoint. Um, what's, what, what is your take on the key aspect that a director needs to be paying attention to when it comes to working with any particular talent, whether it be a, a musician such as BCAP or whether it be an athlete or? Yeah, I think from a director standpoint, the one, the hardest thing about going about filming somebody who also has a, a certain talent like music or sports or and you're trying to capture that your subject is is going to want to do things a certain way and you're going to want to do them a different way and if it's your film you have to let them know that maybe that's not going to work because it's not going to look as great on camera as they think it's going to mm -hmm. so you really have to be able to not control them but make sure that you tell them what you think about the process and that looks good but we're going to do it this way because in the end result this is how it's going to come out mm -hmm. so you have to be able to not just let them do whatever they want because even though a documentary looks like people are mm -hmm. out there doing what they want it's mm -hmm. it's definitely a little bit manipulative because you have to control your subject to make sure you get the end result that you need sure, sure. thank you very much John Collins, Inside the Hideout is his film that's going to be appearing at the New Hampshire Film Festival. Uh, premieres on Thursday, October 16th uh, in Portsmouth. John, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on the uh, New Hampshire Filmmakers interview series. Mm -hmm.